Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is issue 27 of the Spinner Rack. Today we'll be discussing the upcoming movies for 2014. I'm very excited, dude. Yeah? Yeah. As always, I'm Big Bean. Obviously, you know I'm joined by my co-host. Junior, co-host of Comics Remixed. So, Junior, since I'm not as up on... I know... Is Thor next year? Is that this That's year? next week. Thor's next week, damn. See, I'm behind. <laughs> I know we got Winter Soldier next year. Guardians well, actually, no. Galaxy, or is that At the time that the people... This time warp shit, man. At the time that people will listen to this episode, Thor 2 will have already been out for about two or three weeks now. You mean a week, maybe? Okay. Yeah. What Whatever. Up? It'll be... It's already out. By the time you hear this, it's out, and I've probably already seen it. Yeah, there you go. But no, um... So, 2014. Uh, there's a pretty exciting year, uh, for movies as far as comic fans go. Uh, some people would say that the year kicks off with Thor. Uh, I beg to differ. I think Thor is the closing... For this year, yeah, Thor would be closing for this year if it comes because out to me, month. to me, next year is uh, the beginning. It kicks off with Captain America. Uh, my Winter opinion, soldier. my opinion with that Captain America Winter Soldier trailer that's out right now, they totally should have waited until Thor was out in theaters before they aired that thing. Because I was hyped for Thor. After watching the Captain America trailer, I want to watch that instead of Thor. Really, I'm yes. kind of excited for Thor. Um, it Thor looks better than the first one. At the time of this recording. Thor's already been out a week in the UK. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And there's already reviews coming in. None of it good. Really? None of it good. You can't listen to that, the fucking people. Exactly. I, well, first of all, yeah, I was telling the customer earlier, I don't listen to the critic reviews because critics are just that. Um, when it comes to, to comic... Yeah, like exactly. Us. When it comes to the comic stuff, you got to listen to the fan reviews. That's where it's at. That's what counts. Um, now... Like I said, I think they should have totally... They, they could have even debuted the Captain America trailer with Thor. Which is probably what they should have did. Because that Captain America looks so... It looks so action-packed, man. It looks really, really good. It looks like, from what I saw from the trailer, it looks like a step up from the first one. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm excited to be... As excited as I was... And... my I wasn't fulfilled with the first Captain America. This movie looks badass. And I'm still excited to see it. No, it really does. It truly does. Like, there's action everywhere. Um, but not only do we have Captain America next year, uh, we've got the X-Men Days of Future Past is next year. I did not watch. Is there a trailer for that out already? Yeah. I haven't watched it. Really? Nope. Wow. Nope, I did not. There's a, it's a two-minute trailer. There's so many people hating on that movie right now. Hard. There's hard hatred coming down on that movie. See, I haven't heard any hatred from yeah. it. I, the only negative, if you even want to call it that thing, I've heard about the X-Men trailer is, well, the Sentinels weren't shown. Like, well, maybe they're not done being rendered yet. Yeah, who cares? That's that's the only negative I've got out of it. Like, why do you want to... See, that's, that's, I think, part of the problem with movie trailers nowadays, is they pop their cherry in the fucking trailer. Yeah. And then the movie comes out, and you're like, damn, I saw the best thing in the trailer. Right. Superman Returns. Best thing in the trailer. Was the trailer. Was the trailer. <laughs> Um, but no, uh, damn, I can't believe you haven't watched that trailer yet. No. Yeah. I've been avoiding it. Well, basically, the story with this one, they, they tweaked it a little bit. Wolverine himself does not go back in time. Uh, something's happened to the first class version. Wait, no, I thought it was Wolverine that went back in time. Let me finish. My bad. So basically, with the Days of Future Past trailer, what they're doing is Wolverine himself does not go back in time. Kitty, from what I understand, Kitty's developed some sort of new mutant power with sort of like the ability to time travel almost. So she sends Wolverine's mind back in time to possess his younger body, his his past self, because something has happened to the few, the first class version of uh, Xavier, the younger Xavier. Uh, something's happened to him, so Wolverine has to kind of go back and steer him on the right path to avoid the future that they're currently in. Future. Yeah, the future. It so happens you say that Bishop is in the trailer. Warpath is in the trailer. Who's some Warpath off? Blink is in the trailer. Ah. And Sunspot is in the trailer. Yeah. You know? And, of course, they show Wolverine getting all down. So, uh, both the Xaviers end up e- meeting, actually. Patrick Stewart and the other one. I forgot the actor's name. Like, they're face-to-face. And he's just like, you... He, he Stewart tells him something. Basically, like, verbally slapping some sense into him. But it looks like a good trailer. And, you know, I'm excited. Brian Singer's back. 
Um, if anybody could save the X franchise, I hope, hope I have hope that it's him. Um, I believe did he have like a production credit or something in uh, First Class? I don't know because I liked First Class. I'm not sure. I thought First Class was tremendous. I did not like the fact that they put Havoc in the movie. That's the well, only yeah, thing that bothered he me. Was Cyclops' younger, younger brother. brother? Yeah, and like this is where they screw up with continuity. And I think if they're going to do anything with Future Past, they should use Future pla- Past to redo things without actually relaunching the movie franchise. Like, you know, how Batman relaunches all the time and stuff. Because right. they've already screwed up the X-Men. Once you kill off Cyclops, I'm sorry, whether you like him or you hate him, he's pretty much like the the heart of the X-Men. You know, you don't have the X-Men without Cyclops. Think about it. True. And you kill off Cyclops in, like, the beginning of the third movie. So it yeah. basically becomes the adventures of Storm and Wolverine. Well, I think that was the whole point. I think they banked on the popularity of Wolverine so much. But that's what I'm saying. Like they were like, "Hey, fuck this guy." We but then again, him. remember, Singer wasn't responsible for, for no, part he three. Wasn't. No, so no, that's he why I'm, that's why I was wondering if he had a production credit or movie. some shit in uh, in First Class, because know. Know. obviously First Class is in continuity with Wolverine Origins, and it's in continuity with uh, Days it, of Future Past. Is it in continuity with Wolverine Origins? Yeah, because remember they find Wolverine at the bar, and he's like, "Excuse me," and he's like, "Go fuck yourself," and then they get up and re- walk right back out. But what does that have to do with what Origins? That was in first class. Well, Origins takes place 17 years before the first X-Men movie. And then Future Pat, or excuse me, uh, blah, 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 first class takes place... In the 60s. Right, it, but it's it's in the same timeline. It's all in the same timeline. It's the same movie universe. Okay. What I just what I hope with Days of Future Past does is it tweaks it, so all of a sudden Cyclops is alive, you know, you've got... Um, it just wipes away all the bad taste at the third movie. The no, no Patrick Stewart. So that way, Did basically... That yeah, so basically when you get to... Yeah, and that's another thing they have to explain. They, they totally need to fix... Well, no, here's how they explain that, though. I already well, he lived at the, end of the, at the end of the third movie when the one, they were talking about transferring the mutant Yeah, but he was in a different body, so he yeah. wouldn't be Patrick Stewart. Right. So why would Patrick Stewart be playing him in the movie? Exactly. My only explanation for that is that, obviously, whatever we are back to fix changes the timeline so the Xavier that you get in Days of Future Past is an alternate timeline Xavier where Xavier didn't die and have his consciousness transferred into another body. Maybe. Maybe that's the thing that he has to go fix. Who knows? You know, it's all like Star Trek and shit. Let it make it so... I mean, we don't know, obviously, because we haven't watched the movie. It's not out right. yet. But it's exciting to think that that this film can be the start of a fresh Brian Singer-filled X-Men universe. Or... It will be horrible and crash in flames, and Fox will let go of X Men and let Marvel get it back. That's true. That is very true. And not also, that, don't forget, Quicksilver is appearing in this movie. Yeah, not that my faith in Marvel's all that great. You Seriously? Know? No, it's not. I, I they've done a lot of shit, man. Iron Man three, boom. Well, yeah. Do I need to say any more? Iron yeah, Man three. Because you said a lot of shit, so Captain I want to America hear. was suck. You didn't like Captain America. I did not like Captain. America. I thought it was good for what it was supposed to be. It was a time piece. It was explaining the origin. It wasn't supposed to be, you know, oh Captain America. All of a sudden, he's in our world. They gave you the background of who Captain America was. Why couldn't they have pushed what they did in that entire movie in the first half? Cut out a lot of the bullshit. Then wouldn't it have been too rushed? And then give Captain America into the present day to kind of set him up a little bit better. Four Avengers. I could see that. Instead of like, <clears throat> and I know at the end of Captain America they push him for the setup for Avengers. Right, but it's not enough. But this is like the last. scene. I think you could have used a little more. You know. I see what you mean. Wait, why not have had that movie ended on a little bit of a like a just a fucked up note to be I carried know. over in Avengers? Not that I think anything really needs to be done with Avengers. Well, here's the here's the kicker. Check this out. Getting off subject, now that you bring up Avengers, as as fans. 99% of the population thinks that Avengers was like the best superhero movie made, hands down. It's fucking good, man. Okay, now, with all the positive that the Avengers movie has received, when the director himself tells you the movie could have been way better, I didn't like how I did this, I'm going to make sure part two is a lot better. Now think about that for a second. As a fan, your mouth dropped with Avengers. When that movie first came out, that's all you read. Avengers is so great, Avengers is so awesome. The director told you it sucked. So now if the director's going to tell you, well, I'm going to make Avengers 2 awesome. But you thought part 1 was awesome, so that means how badass and mind-blowing is part 2 going to be? I might be afraid part 2 is going to suck. You'd be scared. Right? With that kind of height. Yeah. A little bit. You know what, though? Maybe that's just like the classic writer syndrome. The classic creator period syndrome that you're never really satisfied with what you do. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Could be. Maybe that's Joss Whedon. It was Joss Whedon, right? Yes. It's, it's just him shielding himself from negative critics. 
Maybe. To be like, well, you know, people like it, but personally, I could have done better. Well, we're not going to go on an Avengers rant, because then we can start talking about... We'll be here forever. That, and we'll start talking... I, I know I will. I'll start bringing in S.H.I.E.L.D. and how S.H.I.E.L.D. can bridge certain things, and but we're not getting into that. Okay. We're not. We're going to continue with the 2014 list. And, by the way, none of these movies are, you know, in order of release or anything like that. So, besides X-Men Days of Future Past... Guardians of the Galaxy? I was going to say, besides Captain America, you've got Guardians of the Galaxy. From the teaser footage that was leaked from San Diego, did you watch that? No. Good God, man. I know. I'm a slacker. You are. I'm a terrible comic book fan. Do I have to run through the, like, 20-second trailer for you real no, quick? No, it's all right. I'll watch it when I go home. A bunch of shooting with some narration. Then they show the Galaxy team just uh, kind of standing in front of the uh, the height chart for the mug shots. Yeah. And you hear a voiceover the whole time saying, the guy, and you hear, these guys call themselves the Guardians of the Galaxy. What a bunch of assholes. And when you hear that line... John C. Riley comes out of the shadow with this smirk, like, yeah, I said it. Now, who's he playing? I don't know. I don't know. See, that worries me, because... I don't think he's playing, I don't think he's playing a major character. John C. Riley has... I think when I first saw him was in Boogie Nights, which is kind of a more serious drama, but then he went totally hardcore comedy, yeah. and it kind of worries me to see him attached to this movie. But Bradley Cooper, knowing that he's voicing Rocket Raccoon, kind of has me a little bit worried. He's dude from uh, Hangover, right? Yeah. Okay. And not that I don't like him. I don't see the fit. But I, I don't see the fit. Like, I'm telling you, Steve, planning? Steve Buscemi should have been Rocky Raccoon's voice. He looks like the fucking raccoon. I don't hey even guys. think you could, you could have taken him serious, and... though. That's the problem. Is this, Are they going to use Rocket as like comedic relief? I'm sure. Because if, if that's what they're doing, then isn't that kind of doing a disservice to the character? You know, I, I've got I've got to say that... And that was I totally have... a question, by the way. Because I'm not really I'm not real familiar with Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Like I've... Have all the Guardians comics? Guardian, I, like, them yet. I would describe Rocky Raccoon as like the Wolverine of the group. Where That's he's a like, raccoon. Yeah. So he's just a badass raccoon with a machine gun that will fuck you up. Pretty much. <laughs> I almost thought Sam Jackson should have done his voice. <laughs> right? Be like, motherfucker, I'm a raccoon with a machine gun. I will fuck your day up, bitch. You know, that would have been hardcore. But he's already Nick Fury, so it wouldn't work. Yeah. But, you know, there's things that worry me about it. Dave Bautista. Mm. I mean, I saw a Dave Bautista movie not too long ago where he was like an ex-cop, kind of like a badass. And, uh, you know, right. I don't know, man. He's got that Kevin Nash walk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. You know, I, I, I got faith in Guardians, only because it looks like Marvel's going to promote it the way they promoted the first Avengers, mm. where they're going to go all out for it, and they know... Because this is their big movie. You know, right now Marvel owns the movie things. One misstep. They got lucky with Iron Man 3. But when you really think about it, Iron Man 3 still beat out Man of Steel in terms yeah, of I know. numbers. You know what they... I was reading about Iron Man 3, and they were saying that, like, that drove up ex- the extremist sales, like, of the, the trade. Yeah. Like, a lot of people were like, oh, what's this? And they got, like, we're looking in to try and, like, learn more about it. Yeah. Um, real quick side note on Iron Man kind of pisses me off that fucking they're taking it back with the, the, the Mandarin, the Mandarin now but that's, that's, a, another that's stupid podcast altogether. Um, I mean we'll see man I, I hope it does great I've got a good feeling for it you know when you put uh, you put these stars in the movie and Marvel's hyping and like I said they tank on this movie they're screwed they really are and I think they know that I think their ability to push obscure characters in the movie is screwed what they've got out won't be screwed that's true. Because people will still go watch Avengers yeah, totally. 2. People will go see Thor 3 and Captain America 15. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. But yeah, I, I see that. But, I, you know, I, I almost don't see this movie flopping. I really no. don't. I really don't. Because there's going to be so much promotion behind it. And besides Star Trek, what's the last original space movie you've seen? You know? Like, big budget. Prometheus? Well, that was a spinoff Aliens. Yeah. Well, I mean, just like original. Like, had no ties. Yeah, no, no. There's no. You know, I'm not counting Avatar. Yeah, I'm not counting uh, Ender's Game. I'm not counting uh, the other one, the George Clooney one. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, where he's like trapped in the in space, in space shit. with Sandra Bullock. Something like that. That yeah. sounds like two hours of suck, in my opinion. But hey, whatever. Hmm. I heard it was really good. You'd be trapped two hours somewhere with Sandra Bullock. Oh, geez. Yeah, that's a terrible thing. Yeah. I I'm mean, sure. unless it's in space in a spacesuit, then I guess that kind of sucks. No, find a little Sandra Bullock before you die. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I, I don't think Guardians will flop. So I what, what else is coming? Well, besides Guardians, X-Men, and Captain America, which are all, if you really think about it, Marvel movies. It's all Marvel movies, yeah. Um, DC doesn't have anything in the pipeline for next year. It's all 2015. 2015. Batman, Superman. Yep, but that's 2015. Um, We also have Transformers 4, Age of Extinction. I know you're not a Bay guy. You know, it's not even that I'm not a Bay guy. It's just those movies kind of suck, man. 
I, and I, it's not even really. I'm not even going to blame Bay or the Transformers themselves as much as I'm going to blame fucking Megan Fox. Megan what? Fox ruined those first two weeks. I just couldn't stand her, man. And Shia LaBeouf just sucks. First of all, I like Shia LaBeouf. Uh, I thought he was pretty interesting. I thought he was a funny ass character. Like his his to me, his comedy was right there. Like. He got the timing right. With comedy, that's a very important okay, thing. Okay, but here's the problem. It's fucking Transformers. Do we need comedy? Very this, true. This had, this had the potential to be, like, the next huge fucking science fiction franchise in cinema. And they had to put comedy in it. Like, they do with everything. Did you see Pacific Rim? No, I didn't, but I heard Pacific it was Pacific Rim, great fucking movie. But they throw these two scientist dudes in there, and they're kind of like comic relief, which the movie didn't really fucking need. It kind of, in my opinion, and a few other people I know, it kind of detracts from the movie. Really? So why would you do that? I don't know, but it was still good. I, I liked all three of them. Like I said, part two, I didn't like... So you're excited for four? Hell I mean, yeah. I'm excited. Dinobots Grimlock was my favorite Transformers kid. Okay. It would be cool to see him. Marky Mark, though? Damn. And I'm not going to talk shit, because Mark Wahlberg's a fucking good actor. He is man. a tremendous actor. Like, he's come a long way from the Funky Bunch. Yeah. But, I mean, if you really sit back and look at it, he can do serious roles. Did you ever see The, um, the Shooter? No. That was a great movie. Well, he could handle science fiction. He did that Planet of the Apes movie, which... Yeah, I forgot about I'm that. I'm probably, like, one of the few people that actually thought it was okay. It was, it was decent. I like this, all right. Um, no, I'm, I'm excited for it. I really am. You know, anytime I can see the Transformers on the screen, I'm happy. Um, like I said, Part 2, obviously, was the weakest of the bunch, but I still enjoyed it. I mean, and, and the only two things... Well, actually, three things that I had negative to say about it was, one, Devastator did not devastate. You know, he tore Devastator up... Devastator wasn't devastating? He tore up in, a, like, a pyramid. Who cares? In the middle of nowhere, you know? Um, and to attach with uh, to, to go with the Devastator thing We all know the Constructicons Are separate robots that make up Devastator right, totally. Whereas Michael Bay decided they were just Devastator was its own robot That turned from robots To separate construction vehicles That's it, there was no robo- Vehicle to robot to Devastator He took that middle part out So the actual con- the only No, because the Constructicons were still in the movie But they were their own robots Whereas Devastator was Devastator and the Constructicons oh, were the really? Constructicons. Oh, yeah, you, didn't, you didn't watch part two? I didn't really pay that much attention. Yeah, they were in it. They they were they were them and then Devastator it was like two separate robots as as opposed to them forming to form Devastator. Uh, so that was one gripe. Another gripe was, of course, I thought the comedy relief between the twins was hilarious, but it was unneeded. And of course it was very motion they they say it was racially motivated. I don't care, I thought it was funny. You know, yeah, you know, people say that constantly. They said that same shit about Star Wars Episode One with those Trade Federation aliens mm. that looked like they were Chinese and they kind of spoke. Kind of, yeah, they, you know, whatever, man. Yeah, whatever. And then part the other thing about Part Three that bugged me was where they walk around called, what up, you know, that um, no. Megatron did not like he wasn't a badass in this movie. It was just like I've been resurrected, but now I'm going to resurrect my master, which was the Fallen. And the Fallen really didn't do much. And all Optimus did was combine with Jetfire, and then he beat both of them. Really? This is why I'm not, like, a fan, really. But, I mean, other than, other than that, I liked it. The first movie I loved. It's mismanagement, dude. I looked at the first movie as, like, if I was, you know, obviously it's computer-generated, but if this was real life, dude, and Barricade transforms from a cop car to a... F- first of all, like, when Shia LaBeouf is laying there, and the car's, like, vroom, vroom, like, driving on top of him, you need to shit your pants right there. Because you think this car's gonna fucking squash you. Absolutely, it's me on this. But then all of a sudden, when the car transforms and gets in your face, yelling about a pair of glasses, you don't shit your pants? Come on, dude. I'd have been like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Robot would have been like, you know, sensi- you know, my, my sensors are going haywire. Zzz, 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 and that would have been the first human to defeat a Decepticon. Nice. You know? But uh, I'm very excited for Transformers 4. I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm nervous because they haven't announced anything about the villains, so we don't know if they're resurrecting Megatron, if it's a new villain, if it's Unicron, or excuse me, well, Unicron has been rumored. Uh, if they're going to turn Megatron into Galvatron. And it's like you destroyed a lot of the villains in Part 3. So what's left? I mean, Megatron, we all know, can be revived as Galvatron. Technically, they can all get new bodies because it's you can destroy the body as long as the spark is not destroyed. You get some Cyclonus. Cyclonus was made from Thundercracker. Was he? Yep. Oh, yeah, you're he was right. was the spark of Thundercracker. Right. So it's like, in it's that sense, what do you do? Like, do you res- bring their sparks back? Do you find an excuse? Do you bring all new villains? I'm going to go home, dig that movie out, and watch it. 
the original the Transformers. Nice. Movie. That was the shit. You know, the thing I think that has me the most nervous about the Transformers movie is the effect it might have on the other movie coming out next year that I am super geeked for. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I'll tell you why it makes me nervous. Michael Bay is the director of Transformers 4, but he's the producer of Turtles. So he's And they're both filming at the same time, so he's splitting his attention. And to go back real quick, yeah. Megan Fox did not bother me. She was just a side character. It's like, whatever, she's no big deal to me. I have since gotten over my hatred of Megan Fox. She's no big deal. She's just she's another just face. Like, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I don't care. People are like, well, aren't you mad that Megan Fox is April O'Neil? No. Because I'm not going to watch the April O'Neil movie. I'm going That's to watch not, the Turtles, right? and I'm going to watch Shredder. Yeah, fuck April. You know, she's there. She's their human connection. That's what Casey's In for. my opinion, at this point, it might have been smart for them to, like, follow the lead of the Nickelodeon's cartoon. You know? And just make April a teenager. It wouldn't bother me. Hell, do, you know what? As a matter of fact, why wasn't Emma Stone April O'Neil? She got red hair. True. She did good. But you, you could tell they're really going for it on this. This is something that they're hoping to, to really bank on. Because William Fishner, the guy who's playing Shredder... Mm-hmm. Has already released the cat out of the bag. That they, when they signed him to play the role of the Shredder, they signed him for three movies. Did you know that? Nice. I actually, read, I did read that. They signed him for three movies, but he did go on to say that the second and third movies would depend on the how the, the first, first one. one yeah. So the first one tanks, he's pretty much let out of his contract. If the first one does good, he's automatically I don't there see for two and three. The turtles are so hot right now. Oh yeah, those they're, they're on fucking duct tape. Dude. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. I, I like I said, I said, people are mad because William Fishner is playing the Shredder. They're like Shredder's Oriental. Why is well? He's a white boy. I get that, but at the same time, it's like you know what? Look, at, like you said, the Nickelodeon cartoon. Shredder doesn't come off as Oriental in that cartoon. Yeah, no, like, they really don't get into like. Life. And I get uh, that it's part of the origin, you know, because of the Foot Clan and everything. Hey, but you know what? A lot of fan, like I said, a lot of fanboys are mad about this. You know me, Brian. You know I am a huge fucking Turtles you guy. You've only got inked in your flesh. And it doesn't bother me though that well he, the guy's he's not, not a bad Asian. actor, man. No, he's not. not. A bad actor. Is it now? Do you think it's because of my passion for the turtles that I'm I blind think, to all this? No, or? you know what? You uh, out of most people are very like open to interpretations just from your want to see. You know what I mean? You're not willing to fucking crucify someone if they don't do it the way the comic did it because you're more taken into the view of. Well, hey, we're getting a new Ninja Turtle movie. So I think it's just your excitement of getting to see another Ninja Turtle movie on the big screen that supersedes any bad casting choices that may be perceived by other fans. Okay, I'll take that. It sounds like a compliment, so I'll take it. No, it is. (laughs) Your attitude on that shit has helped me change my view on some of it to the point where when Ben Affleck was announced as Batman, Mm -hmm. I didn't have a fucking shit. I kind of was like, well, maybe it'll be okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it helped me look at it in a more positive light. Okay. So, what else we got coming for 2014? Is that is oh, that it? Man, those are the ones I want to watch. I can yeah. tell you that much. I can care less what else comes out. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I was totally fucking unprepared. So, no, you know, like in my mind, I know there's more because I've been going down this list for the last couple weeks with other people. Like 2014, we got this, we got that, we got this, and now I'm just like crickets but those are like the five movies i'm like That's those, very are the ones you're hyped for. those are the ones i am super hyped for you know um when the first transformers film came out i watched it in theater uh maybe three times the x-men 2 i watched i want to say a good six times in the theater spider-man the first one i watched that a good good god man i like watched toby mcguire yeah Spider-Man. yeah the first sam raimi spider-man with the Green Goblin. Yeah. I must have watched that in the theater close to eight times. But then when it came out on DVD, I watched that movie every night for a month before I went to bed. Then I got really fucking tired of it. You got issues, son. The movie I think I've seen the most in the theater, Transformers 3, Dark of the Moon. I must have paid to see that movie like four times, but then at the time that it was that it came out, Toys R Us was having a promotion. Oh, spend $25 or more on Transformers merchandise. Free ticket. And you get a free ticket for every 25 you spend. Oh, and I was buying all the Dark of the Moon stuff back then. Dude, I was getting free tickets left and right. And then, like, there was something else at the theater. Like, you go so many times, you get uh, you get the fucking free ticket. Dude, I, I'm telling you, I was to watch Transformers Dark of the Moon double digits in the theater. That's it. You got problems, yo. By the time it came out on Blu-ray, I knew that movie by heart, you know. But easily, those are the movies I've definitely... You those can catch are the me. movies for 2014. Man, look, I am so hyped about Ninja Turtles coming out more than Transformers that I'm almost at the point... Where I want to rent out a movie theater, or just either that, or just be like, you know what? I've got twenty tickets. 
Who wants to come watch Ninja Turtles with me? And have like a contest for people to... You know, as a matter of fact, I'm saying it now. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to do a contest for Ninja Turtles. When that movie comes out, I'll have a handful of tickets and you guys can accompany me to come watch the movie absolutely free. That was a fucking save right there. Because I thought you were about to be like, well, I'm giving 20 tickets away. Who the fuck wants to go? No, no, no. We'll do a contest or something, and uh, I have the tickets. I have a certain number of tickets. It won't be like two or three. I want a, a pretty large group to go, because um, I, I know people who know. We people. should try and well, well, you know what we should try and do? We should try and get the whole crew, and it'll be us and a handful of fans. That would be awesome. If you guys want that to happen, you guys want to go with the entire Comics Remix crew to go watch Ninja Turtles next year in theaters. Let us know. We'll try to make it happen. You know, we'll definitely a contest. Will you? I'll be there for sure. Will you? I'm like psyched about. I, out of all the movies we just talked about, that's the movie I want to see the most. I will say this. I am going to the midnight showing. Nothing will stop me from going to the midnight showing. And if you really want to have fun, you're going to go with me to the midnight showing too because that's when I'm going to be the absolute most hype. If I see it midnight showing and then I go back again Friday night, I'll just be like, yeah, I saw that movie. If, if, assuming it was good. But I won't be as into it. You'll get to see me as a child. Fuck, I might even dress up. Nice. Yup. So if you guys want to go watch Ninja Turtles with the Comics Remix crew, let us know. Uh, we'll think of a contest. Obviously, it'll be Ninja Turtles related. Obviously, keep your eyes peeled to Comics Remix at Facebook. Yes, keep your eyes on the Facebook page and uh, keep listening to the show because we'll be dropping clues and stuff like that on the show. Dude, I'm hyped now. You're all excited. I am. I really am. But, I mean, think about it, dude. They've already leaked pictures of the set of the Turtles' lair. They got the whole lair. I saw And they went all out on it. They've got the fucking turtle van, dude. The turtle van, you know? Shredder, I mean, I don't care about the name. I, it's, I always... I want to cosplay as the Shredder. Yeah, you see, you don't even give a shit. You're just like, it's a turtles, bitch. Well, no, because I'll admit, when turtles suck, they suck. Turtles three, turtles in time. It wasn't a bad story. I didn't like. I didn't like the portrayal of the turtles. The story was pretty good. It was original. I didn't like. First of all, I didn't like the suits. They looked really, really stupid. Um, they looked. I mean, you could tell that these were horrible rubber suits uh-huh. as compared to the first two movies where they looked a little bit more reptilian, like they took their time with it. The ones in Turtles 3 look like the ones you can go to a costume store and rent. Right, like the ones they used in the Saban show that saw Yeah, yeah, pretty much. See, yeah, that's another example, the Saban show. Now, as big as the Turtles guy I am, I still own those DVDs, but am I a fan of them? No, I own them because I'm a fan. You're just a fan. You know, I've got to have it all. But um, dude, They're like Pokemon for you. Yeah, they are. I mean, come on, look how much I paid for my Tekken show. But um, it's it's just one of those things where I want people to share in the excitement. For my birthday this year, the Logan Theater was playing the original Ninja Turtles movie. And I was like, I have to go. And it just so happened to be on my 30th birthday that they were playing it. So it was just one of those things where I never got to see it in the theater as a kid. And I'm like, fuck, 30 years and now it's back. I must go watch this movie, you know? So I was very hyped, very, very hyped to go watch it. Oh, say, out of the five movies you've listed here, I'd probably have to be my excitement is... Shit, I don't remember the five movies you listed. Seriously? It was Captain America. Captain America, Guardians, Guardians X-Men, X-Men, Tran- X-Men. Okay, X-Men Transformers, was and Spider-Man. I would have to say... Oh, that's movies. another one. Spider-Man. Oh, the Amazing Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I forgot all about that. Yeah, no excitement for that at all. Really? None. You didn't like the first one? Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I thoroughly you know, enjoyed it. I haven't even gotten over our gripe about uh, the lizard looking like a Goomba. Uh-huh. Because I was watching some documentary on... PBS, I think, about comic books. Okay. Yeah, superheroes. That's a dope ass documentary. And they showed this shit with the lizard. And apparently, in the lizard's earlier appearances, he had more of a human look because he hadn't evolved into like the full mm-hmm. lizard thing. So my gripe about that is now retracted. Retracted. I forgot about Fuck Jay Fox, man. Really? Fuck him. Fuck Django. Fuck him. Django was a great movie. Fuck him. He should not have been Electro. I'm taking the same approach to Spider Man Two as I am taking with the first Amazing Spider Man. Wait and see. Because when the first Amazing Spider-Man promo started coming out, and pictures, the images of him in the costume, I was bashing the shit out of this movie. Yeah, I wasn't excited about it at all. But then I saw it in the theater, and I saw it in 3D. Like I, I, and I was I, like, this movie blew my mind. I think I might have said this on a previous podcast, and if I hadn't, well, then you're hearing it for the first time. If not, you're hearing it again. That's all right. I'm going to have to do a little a little smidge of it, but I'm going to say this, and then we'll wrap it up. Harry Potter, dude. That's what they need to do with Spider-Man. They need to get some young-ass kid. I know the acting will probably suck in the first couple movies, but they will get better. Either that or go out and try and find that super fucking star actor that's a little kid. They could find him. They could scour the earth. I wouldn't say a kid, but I see what you're saying, like 15 years old. Yeah, like 14, 15, so right. he can grow into the role. Because in my opinion, the best Spider-Man is him is, is a kid. And having some 30-year-old English dude playing Spider-Man, man, just don't work for me. <laughs> and neither does the hipster Peter Parker that skateboards. I get what they were trying to do with it. And on that note, out of the six movies we've discussed this issue... What's your most excited one? What do you like? Turtles. Turtles all the way. 
Turtles, and then it would probably be Captain America, Guardians, X Men. Actually, I'm going to go X Men, then Guardians. Okay, wait. First one, Turtles. Turtles. Second one, Captain America. Third one, X Men. Fourth, Guardians. Fifth, Transformers. And last would be Spider-Man. Spider Man. Well, obviously, my number one would be. Uh, oh, geez, let me think. <laughs> yeah, it's Turtles, obviously. Uh, number two, honestly, would be Transformers. Yeah. Three would be Captain America. Four would be X Men. Five would be Guardians, and six would be Spider Man. Um, and the reason I put Guardians and Spider Man so far behind is because those are the two that I know least of. You know, like okay, Electro's. And here's my issue with uh, Spider Man, which we learned with the same Raimi films. You can't pump too many villains in these movies. Because then it bogs it down. You've got Electro and uh, Rhino. what's his name playing Rhino? Paul Giamatti. Yeah. Now he's a great actor. But he's not the Rhino. We don't know that. We don't know. I, I don't know that. if they're going to CGI him and put him in some big suit or something, but. Better than uh, Michael Chiklis's thing. I hated that. You know, that's like a whole other episode, man. I like Ben Grimm. I didn't like. I, just, I don't. Whatever. I just yeah, fucking watched episode. that movie yesterday. Why can't they just CGI I a big that movie. orange rock monster <laughs> instead of a fucking spongy looking well, outfit? Did it really look that so I thought they did a good job. I didn't like it. No? You know what it is? I'm used to like the way Jim Lee draws a thing with the actual eyebrows. Where oh, he's got right. the brow as opposed to just the fucking head. Right, right. Anyway, this was issue twenty seven. Upcoming nerd blockbusters for twenty fourteen. Basically. <laughs> the reasons the theater will be stealing all of Junior's money. <laughs> that and nachos. I right. love theater nachos. It's the shit, man. Theater nachos are fucking. Theater nachos are fucking good, but the, the 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 actual nacho itself is super salty, so you have to drink that soda. But then you gotta go pee, and you miss your movie, and you're mad that you missed it, so you gotta buy another ticket to well, watch that's why it again. You get an extra cup. <laughs> <laughs> like you find someone that left the cup in there, and you just dump it on the floor, and you pee in it. What if you got shit? Man, do that shit before you go in the movie. That's what I'm saying, like, why you I'm eat the movie? Right now, if I gotta poop in a movie, I ain't leaving that theater unless like it's some diarrhea. The and last time diarrhea, I knew that shit was gonna happen beforehand, and I ain't even in the movie. The last time I had to shit at a movie that I actually had to get up and I just could not hold it was um, "Don't Mess with the Zohan." Well, that's a perfect movie to go take a crap there. I know. I thought it was pretty funny. I was watching it. I went with my sister and uh, her boyfriend at the time. That's issue twenty-seven. Our uh, twenty-fourteen blockbuster discussion. Ninja Turtles. Ninja. Who's going with? Ninja Who's coming with me? That's right. It's going to be awesome as always. I'm your host, Bigby Brian, and I'm joined by... Junior Reese, co-host the Comics Remix and all-around Comics Remix Ninja Turtle Guy. That's right. As always, you can find everything you want. ComicsRemix.com, the hub for everything. The 101, the Spinner Rack, the Comics Remix Show, um, and other future projects we've got in the works. You want to contact us, hit us up at ComicsRemix at gmail.com. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll see you back next week for issue... 28. Winding Ooh. down.